Hello, everybody. Um, I started my work with uh, audience interaction when I released my first feature film called Nasty Old People on the front page of the Pirate Bay, which is a file sharing site. How many know about the Pirate Bay in here? That's good, quite a lot. Um, so, you, but how many know about file sharing? No, only a few of you. I mean, like when you illegally share other people's work on, yeah, <laughs> okay, <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> Uh, on, on one of those sites, Pirate Bay is, is one of the biggest ones, um, and it's a Swedish site, and I launched my film on the front page of that site, and was overwhelmed by the reaction that I got, because people started to, like this, it, it looked like on Pirate Bay. When I started my new project, I wanted to see if those people who interacted with the distribution of nasty old people also wanted to be in, was interested in interacting with the creative process of building a film. Because what happened with nasty old people was that people translated the subtitles into many different languages. They organized live screenings in many places around the world. Um, they remixed the film. They also donated money for me to pay the bank loan that I took from the beginning to make the film. And they wrote tons of emails asking how they could get involved in the distribution of the film. So I was thinking, what if they get involved in the creation of the film? And what would happen to the result of the film if I invite them to take part? in the creation? Would the result change? And could the, could the creation of the film be an experience in which people could take part so that the, the process of making the film could be like a result in itself, like a product in itself, in a way? So I started to write the script for my new feature film, Granny's Dancing on the Table. And when I started, I knew that the story would be about a young girl named Amy who grows up isolated in the forest, isolated from society together with her father, and she doesn't know so much about the society. And she survives thanks to her imagination and the stories about her granny, who is an amazing woman. And I started the collaboration uh, by, uh, on, on Facebook, where I created a page and invited people to take part in, in, the, in, in the writing process. But I didn't ask people for direct ideas for the script. Instead, I asked people to share personal stories from their own lives about connected to the themes of the movie, like about belonging, inclusion, inclusion, how it felt to be in specific situations. And people shared those stories with me on Facebook. And then I used those stories as inspiration when I wrote the script. But I never put the whole script up online for anyone to write in. It was more like research in a bigger scale on Facebook. And the next thing I did was I, that I asked people to upload a picture and tell a short story about their own granny. And then I use those stories about grannies from around the world to write the story about Amy's granny. So it's like for me, it's like to use this kind of collective memory and document over women living during the last century and crea create one single storyline, which also is the inspiration and the way to survive for Amy. And this film will also be, one part will be live action, the story about Amy, like with, with live actors, and one part will be puppet animation. So the story, the, Amy's imagination and the story about the, her granny will be puppet animation. So I use many, many stories and put them together in small scenes, which I animate, which also is the inspiration for Amy. So, but what I felt when I did this was, was that uh, there were so, so many great things that people were telling, so many great stories, and I can't use them all because then it would be like a very, very, very long movie. So, even though I think it's a fantastic result in its own, that people actually 
have told those stories and uploaded the, those pictures. I want you to take better care of all those, all this creative input somehow. So I decided to start um, Grannyverse, or to create Grannyverse, as I call it. And Grannyverse is a story universe uh, where th there is one, one sto uh, core story, you can say, and from this core we create different products and different things happening. And the core story is the meeting between my story about Amy and the user's stories, their, their personal stories and their stories about their grannies. So I have a lot of material to work with, and with this material we create the film, of course, but we also create, we develop a game, and we create different kinds of events and exhibitions. And one of those things that we have created is, uh, we call it International Granny Day. The 21st of August, every year, we encourage people to celebrate their grannies and create an exhibition. So we use those pictures and stories uh, and create exhibitions. This is uh, f from 2012 in Malmö. And then this exhibition also travels because we have people around the world who are kind of dedicated to the project and who create their own exhibitions. So last year there was a guy in Serbia who we sent all the pictures to him and he translated it, them into Serbian and organized an exhibition in a park, in, uh, inviting a band to play and then he sent a video back to us with uh, where we, can, we could watch this exhibition. And the great thing is that I've never met this guy. I don't know almost anything about him, more than that, than that he, for some reason, wants to engage in, in Graniverse in this way. So here you can see a sketch over the development of Graniverse. And this is a lot of things happening, a lot of things that we have planned, um, events and exhibitions and requests for contribution. In the middle of somewhere there is a film premiere and then we plan to continue with those things after the premiere. And it looks chaotic and it is because a process like this is very chaotic in many ways because, I mean, I as a director, I can never know what kind of response I will get, what kind of answers people will send to me, what kind of stories they will send, how, they, how this will affect the script, or what kind of new things that will, will happen because of the, the interaction. So, so, I mean, it's like sometimes it feels like you walk in a forest with a dark forest and you can't see anything because it's like you, you have never, you, have, you don't have a clue what to do next because maybe you send out a request for contribution and nobody really answers. And then you have to do something else, something new, and what you do, of course, affects the next step and so on. And for me, it's kind of scary sometimes because I'm a control freak, I think, like, mo like most directors. And it's hard sometimes to not be able to tell the team exactly how it's going to look at the end, exactly what's going to be in the movie at the end, and what's the next step, and so on. But of course, this is something that I also think is exciting. I mean, it's, it's, it surprises me because I have, it's not only it's really that it doesn't only come from me, it's not, not only my ideas, but to feel that you have this community and that the, the result really can change and become something new and something so much better than I maybe imagined from the beginning is, of course, really exciting. And, I mean, the film industry stands before great challenges come according to piracy, how to make people pay for films, of content in general. And I believe that the answer in many ways is to get people involved in the creative process or involved in the process somehow. And to get people to, to become involved is of course, I mean, I, I think that in, in order to make that happen, we need to look at the audience not only as consumers of products, but as partners and people that we have relationships with. And to have relationships with someone, we need to have trust. 
because people need to trust me and my team that we will take care of their stories. And as we come to later, I will also talk about the crowdfunding. They have to trust the people that they give their money to. So to build trust is very important. And I mean, when I think about trust, it's like what you also have in one-to-one in -one relationships, but now it's like a bigger scale. And to be personal, I think, is one of the keys that, that I am willing to share my, my personal thoughts and reasons for doing the project. And also to be vulnerable, because it is, when you share so much about the process in this early stage, when you don't know what's going to happen and you don't have the everything isn't finished and the vision is not really that clear as if you, um, if everything comes from, from yourself, so to say. Um, but to be personal and vulnerable also makes you human. And when you're human, you also, people trust you more. And, and that's also the same for, for, for the next thing, to share both disappointments and success in, in the process, because it's easy to share the success. It's easy to say that we did it and we, now we have so much money or so many stories and now we have already shot this part and so on. But if you only have shared the success, it's also, I mean, no project has only a success all the way. There is also failures and there is also disappointments. And to share also this part of the story makes you more trustworthy and human. Maybe you shouldn't share like only the disappointments. <laughs> if it's disappointment all the way, maybe it's like, hmm, not so much to trust maybe. I don't know. But to, to have both, I think this is, Sometimes, of course, this is hard because you want to tell good news. But from my experience, the times that I have also dared to tell the bad news, I get even more support and even more people who are like, yeah, but come on, you can do this and we are going to do this together. So this is also one thing that is important. And of course, to l allow the result to change, to allow uh, the f that the film becomes different than what you imagined from the beginning, the film or the product or whatever, to, to change during the process. And this, of course, is also sometimes difficult because, I mean, if we have an idea and a vision, maybe we want it to, to end up like that, to be sure that I have something to give away that I, I believe in. But if the interaction is going to be for real and if people are going to feel that they actually interact, they have to, it, have to, it has to make a difference. The interaction has to make a difference. So then to allow the result to change. And after have, having worked with this crowdsourcing for a little more than a year, I was about to start the shooting and needed money. So I decided to crowdfund. And I went to Kickstarter to, and, and I got 928 backers, uh, $54,000 uh, in 30 days. And the reason for choosing Kickstarter is because we had an already an international network around the film. And it was easier, we thought, to engage this international network on an international web uh, platform. Kickstarter is not international, it's an American. Um, site and the problem with Kickstarter is that you need an American bank account and so social sh security number which we didn't have so we had to uh, work with an American producer who opened the account and so on. Um, Indiegogo does not have this, those restrictions but on the other hand Kickstarter has uh, all or nothing which, uh, which means that you have to reach your goal. In our case, we had 50,000 as a goal, so we just came above the goal. Uh, and if you don't reach a goal, no one, you, you don't get any money. I mean, it, no money is withdrawn from the backers' accounts. And this is both good and bad, because if you don't reach a goal, of course, it's not so good. But on the other hand, it creates an urgency for people to feel that, ah, come on, she has to, she's only 10,000 left. So come on, let's do this now. So, so it's, depending how you look at it, it could be good or bad. It, it 
s ner a, lot of, a lot of nerves it creates. I mean, a lot of stress. But if you can cope with that, I think it's quite good anyway. So what we did to prepare this, um, this campaign was that we made a video. It's much, much more of the product that has a video that uh, is successful than those who don't have a video. Uh, we prepared mailing lists. We looked into all our contacts, created lists of people that we knew from, from the project, of course, but also from other projects. And we are some people involved in, in Graniverse. And everybody's contact we listed. So we had a list about around 5,000 emails lists when we started. And the perks um, to have, I mean, the, the biggest perk or the most important perk is, of course, the finished film. On the other hand, I also say that I will release this film on the Pirate Bay when it's finished for everybody for free. So, I mean, this is interesting that people actually wanted this perk, even though it would be for free for everyone. And I think that's, that also says something about why people engage is not only, it's, it's not first of all because they want something good that no one else gets, but in this case, they could pay for a film to be made that anyone can see. And I think that was important for, for people to engage. And also to use digital perks, because it's, very, it's a lot of work and a lot of time if you have physical perks to send to people. Uh, we also prepared the updates because during the campaign it's good to give an update now and then about the project and the development and we prepared what, who is going to write what I update which day. And the reason we did that is because a campaign is very intense. It's the most emotionally exhausting I have ever done in my whole life. It's really because you go out there, you give away a lot of yourself, you write all these emails, you are in dialogue, you ask for money. And Jeremy said, don't be shy. Yeah, that's true. You have to just put the emotions aside because sometimes you can also be a little bit hard to, to, to write those emails and actually ask people for money but just put those emotions aside and just do it because the thing is that people are also so happy when they have contributed and we actually succeed. And of course at the end, when actually, when we are able to make the film at the end is of course a success for everyone who contributed with money. And yeah, to find the target audience, to know who you are aiming and what the, if you, you can have may, many target audience of course but what information to which people because it's maybe not the same information you send to all of all all of your different target audiences and when it comes to the video um, I really think that to be personal is is the key because as Martin said people like to people likes people or people likes to help other people even though they also, of course, have to like the project. And to make it simple and clear, I think that I made my first video way too complicated. It was five minutes long and I wanted to explain everything about Grannyverse and about how to tell the story about your granny and about the game and about everything. And I got emails from people saying, ah, it looked like a fantastic project, but I don't really understand what it's all about. So. I had to change and I made some different versions. I think the last version is about three minutes and it's much more simple. But now afterwards, I think that I could have made it even more simple and even more clear. And then to use humor is very effective. Many of the successful kickstarting campaigns use humor. And to show the values behind the project is also important. I mean, I think that people want to pay for values. They want to know that the persons behind the project has an idea about the world that they support. And if they have, it's more, it's, I think it's more likely for people to support something that they, a cause that they believe in, 
than just like just a, a, a creative project. And for example, we had um, one of our target audience was uh, kind of political because uh, the idea behind the distribution of this film is that we are going to release it on the Pirate Bay again, but this time we also want to release it uh, on the cinema at the same time. So it's going to be a simultaneous internet, pirate, and cinema distribution. This is the goal. And it's quite hard to do because it's hard to engage the distributors for this kind of distribution. But we say that we think it's important because culture and information should be available for free to everyone on the same conditions. And we don't think it's a contradiction between paying for a film at the cinema and at the same time have it for free on the internet. And we say that it's necessary in a world, I mean, if we want an, an equal world, a democratic world, it's, in, it's important for cul cultural information to be available for free. So this is the cause. And then, of course, we also have the, the film and the, the content in the film and so on. So the other target audience is, of course, people who can, can um, um, feel something about the themes in the movie. This is a list of how people actually found the Kickstarter page. I mean, which link, where they clicked the link to come to Kickstarter to donate money. So in our case, Facebook was the biggest source um, or channel of information. Uh, it's also because I think we use Facebook a lot before, so most of our fans are on Facebook. I mean, we have only 1% from, from Twitter, and it's not because Twitter is bad, it's because I'm a bad twi Twitterer. Bad at Twitter. Um, the Pirate Bay is also big here, and we, the last weekend we had um, a picture on the front page of the Pirate Bay. So this is the last weekend, a lot of things happened. Kickstarter search is when you already know about the project and go into Kickstarter and write Granny Sansk on the table and search for the project. And Kickstarter explore is when you just go to Kickstarter and search for cool projects and don't know anything about it before. And that's only 1%, which very clearly says that you can't just put it on a platform and wait for things to happen, but you have to find the people and bring them to the site. And of course, Pirate Bay is a lot of people that is not in our network either, but it's a, a channel, it's a channel for information to bring people to the site. And this is uh, what the campaign, campaign looked like week by week, what we did. So the first week we send about 5,000 email and uh, Facebook messages to people, uh, informa send information about the product and ask them to come to the Kickstarter page. And, and the, f the first thing that happened was that people started to share the, the, the Kickstarter page on Facebook really a lot, which was, of course, really good. But it was, and, and we had a quite a good start also the first week. Uh, I mean, of course, we, we contacted people that we know quite well and who are engaged in the project already. So the first week was kind of easy. The next work uh, a week, we tried to get press and tried to get blogs to write about the product, and we succeeded. So we got some good press. Um, but the third week, when the press came out, it was kind of slow. It didn't really happen so much. We had, I think, just above 30% when we were in the third week, and actually, the third week, I thought that we wouldn't make it. I thought that we would fail, and it was quite stressful and quite hard because we put so much work and effort into the into the campaign, and yeah, we were a little bit like panicking. What should we do next? What shall happen now? But in the end of the fourth week, something happened, and it was a combination of that we were on Pirate Bay on the front page and also contacted everybody one more time. Uh, and now, this time, it was not like four weeks to go. It was like 40 hours to go. And this really did something, because the urgency of, oh my god, it's only 40 hours left. Shit, yeah, sure, I, I wanted to support, but I forgot. Because it's also that, I mean, people in the beginning of the campaign, people might think that, yeah, but four weeks is a long time. 
so I can wait. But then when it comes to the end, it's, it's much more urgent. And those two things in combination made it turn. So this is what the development scale looked like. You have the three, last three days at the end where it just went up. So we, the campaign was successful at the end. And now we have uh, shot the first part of the film for those money. And we, have, we are about to start with the puppet animation it's the 1st of January. And we have like estimated delivery time in January. So, we, uh, or I mean, in, in uh, December 2013. So, we will probably not make it to December, but maybe January, February 2014. What we learned from the campaign is yeah, to keep it simple and clear, as clear as and simple as possible. And if it doesn't work, the strategy that you have to change strategy, to don't be not be afraid of change the video, uh, change the information, change the text until it works. And then, yeah, most people back at the end. So even though it's hard in the middle, don't give up because it's still a possibility that they will contribute in the end. And also, one thing that we didn't have that I think now afterward would be really great if you had is to have a campaign leader, someone who is not so emotionally touched, uh, attached to the project, but who can stand a little bit outside and, and tell you what to do. Like when you are stressed and tired and start to panic, someone who can say that, okay, now you're gonna write an update or now you're gonna change the video. S to just lead the work. I think that's something that's really good to have. And never do it alone, I will also say. Always be at least two people to support each other when you do a crowdfunding campaign, okay? This is um, a mountain and it's levels of engagement. And always, people will always engage in different ways. Some people, like the, the, the climbers at the top, are those who maybe organize their own exhibition, who translate subtitles and so on, who really engage and do a lot of things during uh, a longer time. And in the middle, it, it's like 1% of, of uh, the community will be those people who engage a lot. 9%, the skiers in the middle, they, are, they maybe post something on Facebook, they tell a granny story, and they once or twice during the process they contribute with something. And at the bottom, you have the, the coffee drinkers, the people who like, maybe like on Facebook, they know uh, the product exists, and they will go and watch the movie at the end. So as you can see, probably like 10% of the audience will contribute with something, and the rest of the 90% will be like more passive, ordinary uh, film audience. And then you can ask yourself, what's the point with all this work for contribution if only 10% will contribute? But they will. then you also have to remember that this every, every climber have 99 followers. They will drag 99 people into the project because they um, do so much work with spreading the information and talking about the project that 99 other people will hear about it. And the same thing with those in the middle, the, they will have nine people, each of them will have nine people that they, they get to know about the project through them. So that's why it's also those people here in the top is really, really important. And then, of course, even though it's only like 10% of the audience, it's still 10%. I mean, it's still people who are engaged and support and want the movie to happen and stand behind you. So it's totally worth it. That's what all from me. Thank you. So do we have any questions for Hannah? Okay, I'll start with one and, and you guys think of the second. Um, would you crowdfund or crowdsource your next project as well? Definitely. I mean, I would definitely, I want to keep working with crowdsourcing to start with because I think it's, it, it really gives a lot to the project and I am really, 
I'm more and more curious to really find out what, what the contribution will be. So I will definitely, crowdfunding, I will wait a little bit and think about it, but I will probably do it again. Now it's your turn. Any questions from the floor? You know, Hannah, you know, just curious, you know, to, um, is there any limitation on the platform that you use for crowd, crowdfund, for example? Because, you know, if you're, you, if you're doing filming, obviously, you need story appealing to emotions. So that is quite a, a, a strong connection with people. But does it work for other products or other, other things? Absolutely. I mean, there are many projects also on Kickstarter that is not film, not story in this way. I mean, but even though it's not a film story, there is always a story. There is always a, um, someone with a passion for something, someone who wants to, to create something that changes something. So this story can also be as appealing, I think, uh, as a film story, definitely. Yeah. 呃，我想问一下，你这个模式，你会觉得在中国地区，只是在你的 your country， 你的国家，如果在中国，你觉得这个模式可以推广 ？We don't have the translation. Let me let me try. And um, 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 he's asking, you know, what you do actually works in China. If yeah, what you do, you know, in terms of uh, 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 um, appealing, you know, uh, seeking uh, crowd fund, you know, crowd source, would that work in China? Of course it would work. I mean, I don't know enough about China, I think, to, to give a good answer to that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, for example, in Sweden, we had a slow start because we didn't have really the, um, the history of crowdfund, especially. For example, in, I think it's in US, there is a much longer history of uh, contributing yeah. to things. In Sweden, we have like uh, the we welfare system has been well built and it should be included in the tax and so on. So why should you put your own money into projects like that? Mm. But now, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a matter of explaining for people and for people to actually take part in the first crowdfunding campaign and see what it's like and what will happen and so on. And then it, it slowly changes and more and more people start to get involved in, in those campaigns. So, I mean, definitely, I think it... it yeah, I, I, I think it may work. You know, it's, um, it, it's because you, know, you use Facebook, for example, in China. You know, the Facebook is not, is not working in China. So they have their own version mm -hmm. in China. So I guess, you no, know, it's maybe over time, it may, it may um, uh, 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 be able, you know, to, to happen in China. <laughs> Tatumstory,根本没有什么一个取道可以可以来来来来推广。但是我家的一个加上一个就是因为他他解释很多都是从一个Facebook。一个渠道来做 yeah, he, he wants to know, you know, whether you would uh, uh, use, you know, the, the Facebook equivalent in China, you know, to, you know, appeal for support, for example, in your project. Can you take it one more time? Yeah, whether, he, uh, whether you would uh, use, you know, the Facebook equivalent uh, uh, mechanism in China to do crowd uh, uh, funding, for example, in China. If I would use the fa Facebook mechanism, or Facebook? Equivalent, because in China there's no Facebook, but ah. there's a, uh, ah, a Weibo, it, there's another okay. uh, equivalent. Yeah. yeah, sure, definitely. I mean, it's all about spreading the information. It's all about to start it and to, to educate people to know what it's like and what it's all about. And, and you need a partner, Chinese partner, so that you, know, yeah. you can communicate in Chinese. Yeah, yeah. but I think he should a partner in China. Okay,
We have one final question. So, uh, after all, the, uh, in order to have a successful uh, crowdfunding campaign, uh, the most important factor is the context, the product itself. Is it uh, the strategy or is it luck or all of the above? I mean, the, the, how, how it can be successful, a campaign. I mean, is it the, strat the strategy that you followed, which was most important? Was it that they loved the context and the movie and the idea? Uh, was it because there are so many, so many projects coming through Kickstarter, and I'm sure that it's not all, all of them is crap. I mean, there are things that are great, but maybe they, they don't get noticed. So that is yeah. the question. Does luck play an important role as well? Is it does? Luck, luck, be lucky. Luck? Be luck. Luck. luck, ah, okay. Um, well, I, well, I think that, I would more say hard work, actually, to, to really work on, to find the people and bring them there, to your own network, to engage people, to spread the word to more people, and I think that the work that I have done with crowdsourcing first was the key to the, to the crowdfunding campaign. So that's why I wanted to talk about the crowdsourcing first, because if I hadn't done anything and no one know about the film and then started the campaign, I think it would be much, much, much harder. So to involve people and engage people in other ways before crowdfunding, I think is important. And then, yes, I mean, I think when, we, when it comes to some projects that just you do something and you, you might not really know what it is and it gets viral and it spreads everywhere and a lot, a lot, a lot of people contribute. Then maybe you also can talk about luck because it's, um, I mean, you do something right, but you maybe don't know exactly what it is, you know. So, so of course that factor also comes in. Sometimes you don't know why something gets viral. Um, so yes, of course, it w especially when it comes to the really big amounts, I think so. But the most important thing, I think, is to just work, spread the information, yeah. Thank you very much, Hannah. Thank you.